Hello, Internet! I ran out of ideas, so let's do the good old tier list. Well, considering I almost never do this, I thought it's about time. Welcome to my 2024 Honkai Shiro tier list! Before the video starts, here are a few disclaimers. This tier list is made solely based on my own experience with the game, so please do not take this as your family's Bible. All 5 stars are considered E0, and all 4 stars are considered E6. I have made 3 lists based on characters' roles since you can't quite rank them all in one go. I only rank them by tiers, and it is not arranged from best to worst in each tier. This list disregards prefix since that's a whole different story. And finally, feel free to disagree, but I do hope you keep it civil. Without further ado, let's get started. Here I have my list of damage dealers or sub DPS. Let's take a look at the top first. We have the very obvious Jing Liu, excelling in multi target and single target damage both, with just a minor transmigration downtime. That's honestly a no brainer to me, but yes, yeah, strongest DPS in the game, Jing Liu for sure. In my opinion, though, IL Dantic is still trucking in today's meta, doing a crap ton of damage, be it multi or single target. Hence why I ranked them here, and yeah, you can quite literally bring these two into any game mode and they'll either work great or work fine. Though Dan Heng is more particular with his team comps and is more costly in terms of skill points, for me personally, I still think he deserves to be at the top tier along with Jing Li. Now again, I don't rank them based on who's better or worse in a tier, there's just too much variables to really accurately do that. Moving on, we have the S tier. This is a tier where they are still incredible characters but not quite at the top. The first on the list, we have Dr. Ratio, the free Giga Chad. I have used him in a lot of teams and situations and understand how great he can be. And honestly, the only minor issue he'd have is with his ultimate. His ulti applies wise man's folly on the enemy. If your allies attack this target, ratio activates his follow-up attack. But if you say just kill an enemy with the ultimate or ratio, or maybe with one of his follow-up attacks, the rest of Y Span's folly will disappear along with the enemy's death as well. This can be seen as a waste, and ideally, if he could transfer the Y Span folly onto another enemy upon defeating one, like how Proof of Death would work, he'll instantly be S plus tier in my mind. But hey, being an S tier, still one of the best. Next, we have the classic Sela. She is still one of the best damage healers in the game, straight up damage, not much BS at all. The only thing that brings her down a little bit is the fact that you have to activate Resurgence by defeating an enemy. Me, something you cannot guarantee that can happen at all times. But when it does happen though, she will perform very well. Fitting for an S tier. We then move on to Ching Chue, which is a 4 star, but at E6, you can pretty much assume she's a 5 star man. Though she does have some RNG to her kit, it is actually not too overbearing. I find her still fairly consistent, dishing out damage fit to be called a 5 star. S tier seems just right for QQ. Next on the list, I've got Blade, the undisputed strongest solo character with more than enough damage to boot. I think he is underrated since if you pair him with Branya, suddenly he can compete with the strongest of DPSs. All of that while being damn near unkillable too, something no other characters can do. However, his damage output is by no means at the top, so yes, I would say S seems just right for him. Next, we have Kafka and Topaz, which are both in a similar position where they work with very unique mechanics. Kafka especially can be used in a dot team with Great Iphid, or she could just be used as a hyper carry and still perform decently. And a little birdie told me there might be a good dot character in the future, so Kafka sits nicely on this tier, I think. Definitely a worthy investment. Topaz paired with Dr. Ratio, one of the best duos you can ask for at the moment, so yeah, I would say Topaz is good at S tier. On top of that, any follow-up attack characters to get released in the future, Topaz will be in that team, making a pretty valuable character too. Moving on will be the A tier, a tier of good characters with some criteria they have to abide by. We got Argenti, which is a premium AoE DPS but is plagued by the need to face against multiple enemies for his kit to work fully. That makes him the best in pure fiction, but as I mentioned, we're not including that for this list. In every other game mode, there are some AoE bosses like Swarm, but they might also be some like the elite duos that we see this week. This limits Argenti's use ability since you simply rather use someone else versus less enemies. Still a good character with massive damage output though, especially when you pair him with the batteries. An A tier character for me. Jing Yuan is in a similar situation, he does immense damage especially against a lot of enemies, suffers a bit in single target situations, and is limited by Lightning Lord's turn cycling. Which is why I don't think he's quite so S tier, just A for me. Next on the list is Clara, which is a character with high potential damage, right, but is limited by the amount of which she's attacked. Again, still a good character by all means, A tier for me seems well. Next, we have Shueye. This one's a surprising one. She's a 4 star, so we can consider her at E6. This character is built as a hybrid, generally with break effect and attack, crit rate, crit damage. I've used her in another video, beating MOC 12 with her comfortably, but that is locked behind the ability to reduce enemies' weakness on your team. If you can do that, she gains more stacks on her passive that allows her to just do more in general. But what sets her 
part is she herself ignores element on her follow-up attack if she has E2, making her much more versatile than her peers. And she ignores element on her LT anyway. If you match all her criteria, all of a sudden she looks like a 5 round DPS that ignores element. Very underrated character, man. And finally, we got Welt. I personally think Welt's best build is with a mix of damage and effect hit rate. He does surprisingly high damage while being able to land imprisonment and damage increase debuff. Makes for a perfect sub DPS for someone like Dr. Ratio, which means he sits nicely on the A tier for me. Next up, we have the B tier, which are mainly characters that need very specific characters or simply just isn't better. I will be going through them a bit quicker since I wouldn't want a 30 minute video. Firstly, we have Himiko here that relies a ton of weakness breaks, which pretty much means if the enemy don't have fire weakness, you would rather consider someone else. She also suffers a bit against singular enemy, but otherwise she's still a usable character. And with all of that said, I think she is a B tier character. Different in pure fiction though, but again, we don't include pure fiction for this list. Moving on, we have Yancheng. He is quite RNG based as well. You could get hit and lose your passive because of RNG. You could just not proc your passive anyway as well because of RNG. All for damage that can't top Dr. Ratio or Sila. And well, we all hate this guy anyway, right? Yeah, a B tier character for me. Moving on, we have Dan Heng, which has a hard time timing his passive and LT consistently, though if you could, his damage is genuinely impressive. Lucas and Bone Sushang here are all mostly built as break effect or dark characters, which means they do rely on the enemy's weakness quite a fair amount. But not to say they're all bad at all though. I used Dan a lot in PvP and lost to a sample as well in that same PvP. They're all very decent characters still. It's not to say they're bad. Hook, Serval, and Herda are all very similar. They do multi-target damage or AoE damage, but suffers when it's versus a singular boss. Again, different in pure fiction, yeah? Overall, they're all still decent characters, but if you're a purely meta player, you will have better options in my opinion. Finally, we have the C tier, which are characters that I think is hard to use. We firstly have the physical trailblazer, which is given not enough survivability to live and not enough damage to outshine other physical options. And unsurprisingly, we have Arlon as well. We all know the deal with him, but he needs to be near death to be usable. Very risky, yet the payoff isn't quite so worth it. And that concludes the damage dealer list. Next, we have our buffer and debuffer tier list. I realize this script is getting way too long, so I'll try to be more concise. In S plus tier, we have Ronmei and Bronya. I think there's no need for me to explain. They both amplify your damage immensely, no matter who the DPS are. If you own them, prioritize building them. It's worth it. First, in A tier here, we have Tingyun. Tingyun definitely isn't on the top since she does not match Ronmei and Bronya at all. And it ain't even her fault. The two are just too broken, man. Tingyun gets you more damage and helps a lot of characters function way more easily with the energy regen, right? But not quite Ronmei good though, in my opinion. So she sits right at the S tier. Next up, we have a Hanya. Similar to Tingyun, she fits in most teams and she simply just gives you more damage. On top of that, it's a speed buff and extra skill points, something that's universally sought after. For how easily both can contribute to most teams in the world, S tier for me is perfect for them. Moving on, we see the Death Shred duo in Silver Wolf and Pella. Silver Wolf is the best single target Death Shredder, while Pella is the best AoE Death Shredder. You literally look only for these two whenever you're looking for defense reduction in your team, so yeah, easily S tier for me. But not as impactful still compared to the mega duo in S plus though. Finally, we have the A tier. They are still good buffers or debuffers, but they do come with some trick to them. Firstly, we have Asta. She is generally great with her speed buffs, yes, but her damage amplification comes from her passive, which needs fire weakness on enemies to function well. For that reliance, I definitely think she is a tier below someone like Hanya or Tingyun, which you can just slap and use for fun. Next up, we have Yukong here. I put it in A because she's a bit finicky. Her buff only exists if she has her bow strike. She gets two from her E and one for her ulti if she's E6. The issue is that every ally that takes her turn will decrease the bow strike by one, meaning her buffs are either timed perfectly or we might just not have any buffs at all. With enemies being able to push your team around at times, it does get a bit more annoying, hence why I put her in this rack. Finally, we have Gwei Knifed, which does apply damage increase as a debuff. However, it's not as valuable as what a Pella can bring with her defense shreds, and Gwei Knifed has half her kit focusing on dots as well, so perfect for a Kafka team. Not too much otherwise, right? You just rather use a Pella if you have her. And last but not least, we have the list of sustainers. To start, we have the S plus tier featuring Fu Shred. For me, a sustain is good when they can keep my team alive, and Fu Shred does that the best. When we see Luo Chen and Huo Huo, yes, they are very good sustainers, but if the boss decides to hit my DPS four times non-stop, only Fu Shen can stop me from dying out of the three. She still gets me critter on the passive and has a cleanse for debuffs as well, which is just the cherry on top. Perfectly an S plus tier sustainer. Then we have what I think would be the most controversial. We have Huo Huo. This character is honestly hard for me to give an accurate ranking since she isn't just quite a sustainer. She has like a crazy 
strong harmony kit to her as well but in the end i decided to take into account her entire value as a character and yeah i think she is as valuable as fushin could be not saying they are both the same in terms of being a sustainer but just hear me out with Ho, you are essentially immune to debuffs you have less healing than luocha but still good enough and on top of all that you have energy regen something everyone would love to have with someone that does everything like that i think it's fair for her to be put in the same tier as Fu Shred, both focusing on different things but focusing on very valuable things respectively right moving on we have the s tier in luocha his one thing that separates him from the rest is how he needs zero skill point to fully function he doesn't cleanse as well as ho ho does but heals more than she does he does strip buffs from the enemies as well but considering Fu Shred immortalizes your team and ho ho still has her whole harmony kit to her i decided to set luocha right here at s still a premium sustainer perhaps just shy of the s plus tier moving on we see the a tier Drapart to me is very underrated he can't cleanse or heal but he damn near immortalizes your team as well with his shield a very straightforward attack that keeps you healthy fair to be an a tier links here is a solid solo sustain however in no world where she is better than luocha right but at e6 she can hold her own even compared to japaro bailu speaking of bailu we do troll her a bunch with how she looks kind of funny and that she has no cleanse but truth be told she mitigates your damage with her major trace and has very high healing on her ult as well still a very solid healer and it also depends on who you fight right if you're not fighting an enemy with a cc bailu is just a beastly healer that never dies herself and has a revive but i do agree still it only makes sense for her to have a cleanse anyway why is she the only healer without it man <laughs> lastly we have the b tier starting us off we have the fire troll blazer the one issue i have with her is that she'll never be able to solo sustain with the tiny shield she gets from the team her taunt is great but ultimately my priority is to still survive that's my first expectation for a sustainer so yeah next we have natasha which after using her just recently there's not much terrible with her but she is overshadowed by Lynx, which does most things better and well they're both free too so you would rather just use links and then finally we have march 7th which can very barely solo sustain not the best option if you're strictly saying sustaining a team and ladies and gentlemen that will be all for my 2024 tier list for hunkai Charel. again these are all based on my own gameplay and i could be biased i try not to but you know maybe i did it subconsciously i don't know i've tried out all these characters i made a video on pretty much all of the characters as well so yeah i think it shouldn't be too far off the mark but hey let me know in the comment section down below but i do hope you keep it civil guys ultimately this is just a subjective opinion so yeah that is all hope you guys enjoyed take care